All right, thanks for stopping by. What do we have here? What is in the box, Maddie? Well, it says lithium ion batteries, but I'm pretty sure this contains LifePo 4 batteries. Maybe they're just using an old box. Could this be something for van life, perhaps? <laughs> Let's check it out. Well, it's packaged well. It's double boxed, styrofoam padding. One, two layers of styrofoam padding from a brand called Afiri, which you may have never heard of, and that's kind of the purpose of this video, to get you familiar with this brand. It's a power station. I'll just go ahead and uh, give you the surprise now. It's a giant power station. Looks like it comes with a dust cover. Uh, little goodies and candy in here, like cords and adapters. Manual. Look at this bad boy. 2400 watt power station. You want to do van life simple? You don't want to go through all the hassle of wiring up your own battery bank? I think you could get one of these to power your whole van. We're going to be doing a review today. I'm going to show you what all this will power, how to charge it with solar panels, and I'm even going to plug Starlink into it and show you that you can run your Starlink off of this thing. Let's get into it. Holy cow, it is a beast. So, a Fury contacted me and asked me if I would like to review it, and after I read the brochure about it, I thought, how can they sell this at such a good price? It's got the features I look for. See, I don't, I don't go by the brand. I'm not a brand snob. So I started looking at all the features it has and I thought, I have got to check this out. It's got a compartment up here. I guess you put your cabling up here. Yeah, you can store all your cables right there so you don't lose them. That's brilliant. 2000 watt hour, 2400 watt output. That's massive tons of USB ports, the 100 watt USB ports, and all of these USB-C ports. What's this? Oh, those seals are nice. That's nice. Oh, that's where, uh, that's an XT60. This is like a cigarette lighter port. I have a light on the front. I'm gonna have to charge it up first, I think. I'll have to read the manual. Oh, you have a reset button. They all should have that. That's very important because in the past I had a power station that all it needed was to be reset and it didn't have a reset button. You had to take it apart and unplug it and plug it back together. This is where you charge it in. You can charge it in from an AC outlet in a house and you can charge it in through solar or DC power from a car like a cigarette lighter would plug in there. Very nice. This is what I always look for, those certifications down at the bottom. You can pause it there and read all the specs on it. 2,048 watt hour. That is large capacity. XT60 output and input. This is Looking good so far, and a max of 2,400 watt output. It's 49 pounds. Pure sine wave inverter. Interesting. Very good, so I feel safe using the Starlink on it. Let's see what this is. Oh my gosh, you got six AC outlets. And there's the button you turn, push to turn this part on. Double fans to keep it cool. Handles on the side, just a big square box. I like that because it's flat on the top so you can put stuff on it, it won't slide off. All right, let's charge it up. Okay, I'm gonna see if they'll send me some discount codes for you guys, and if so, I'll put them in the description below the title of this video. But you gotta go to their Amazon you can get discounts just by the QR code. 
a fury. I've also heard it pronounced a fury, but I prefer a fury. I don't think they care how you pronounce it. Oh, five year warranty. Oh yeah, I gotta register that for sure. All right, I'm liking what I see. All right, let's go through the manual and I'm gonna see if I need to charge it up before first use. Okay, I didn't see anywhere that said charge it up first. I turned it on and it comes in with 20%, 26% charge already on it. And you can plug it into a wall outlet and a solar panel at the same time if you want a super quick charge. I'm going to charge it with the solar panels. Let's see, that plugs in right over here. And you can plug up to 500 watts of solar. Okay, you gotta love this. They sent the adapter I needed for my solar panel that I already had. You gotta love that. So this is actually an XT90 over here for input and this output is XT60. So I didn't have this, but it was in the little bag that comes with it. Gotta love that. I've only got 200 watt panel coming into it now and it's really dirty. I need to clean that off. But let's see, I'm bringing in 130 out of a 200 watt panel. And if I aimed it in the correct direction, I'd bring in a little more. So I'm gonna let this charge up. I'm so glad that they sent this adapter that I needed. It's got the MC4 connectors on one end and the XT90 on this end. So it comes with what you need. I've got another 200 watt panel there. Uh, it, I could uh, plug this in. I just thought of something. If I can, all I have to do is stay under 50 volts. Well, that's no problem because this panel's 19 and that one's 19. So yeah, that's th just 38. So let's just plug them in series. It's simple, let me show you. You'll take uh, the negative from one panel and plug it into the positive from another panel. Let's do that and I'll uh, show you how this works. See, it says here in the manual, voltage cannot exceed 50 volts. So we're good. We'll be at 38, maybe 40 tops. All right, so let's get this plugged in. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the positive plug from one panel and I plugged it into the negative panel plug from this panel. It doesn't matter which one. And then you have two left over, right? That's a negative. This is a positive. And you plug them into this little adapter with the XT90 on the end of it. And then you plug the yellow plug into the power station. Okay, so I have them plugged in. I'll give you a shot tracing it all the way down so you'll understand this very simple the background noise you hear is from the air conditioner on the house the power station itself is very quiet we got the beep and let's see what it does oh yeah we're up to we were at 130 watts and now we're climbing i think it might go 250, 300, when the sun comes out completely. Uh, I've got a little overcast going on up here. Some thin clouds. But what you're looking at is a 200 watt panel here and a 200 watt panel here. That's a maximum of 400 watts. I'd like to see it to get up to 300 watts if those thin clouds would go away. Because you know, just because you have a 400 watt panel, it doesn't mean you're always gonna get 400 watts, usually about half that. But I'll keep an eye on it. it. Says it'll charge in six hours. It's pretty good. You must have a power station that has passed through charging, and this has it. Don't ever get a power station that you can't charge and use to power things at the same time. You know what I mean? So I'll just have a solar panel plugged into it while the Starlink is running, and I'll be bringing in more wattage than the Starlink's even using. Because Starlink will use about 45 watts, give or take a few, continuously. And with just one of these panels, I'm gonna be bringing in between 100 and 170 all the time. So that's my plan, Stan. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. 
I've got the Starlink out. There's the router. There's the dish. It's booting up. And when it first boots up, it uses a lot of wattage. But it's settling down now. And it's fluctuating around 40 to 46. It'll jump up when it needs stronger signal. It'll pull a little more power. So the top number, 261, that's what's coming in from the solar panel. And the 60, 57, 56, that's what's going out to the Starlink. But after it's running for about 15 minutes, it'll settle down to around 45. So it's working. So I'm bringing in power from the panels into the power station. And then it's going out from the pure sine wave inverter. It's just plugged in to an AC plug here. Going out into the router and the dish to power it. And just think, since this is 2400 watt output, think of all the other stuff I could be running off this. I could be charging devices from the USB and the 12 volt outlets. I could be having other things plugged in over here to the AC inverter. And it's just a massive amount of power. One problem I've always had in the past with my old power station it just didn't have enough capacity. I couldn't run the Starlink as much as I needed to because Starlink is my major power draw out of the whole camper van. I have a refrigerator in there, a Max Air fan, lots of other fans, lights and all that. They don't take much power, but the Starlink does draw a lot of power over time and this is gonna solve the problem. This is what I needed all along. I needed one with about 2,000 watt hour, and this one has 2,048. And the ability to bring in a maximum of 500 watts of solar panels and only have 400 watts, just to be able to recharge quickly like that, it's, it's very important. It makes things much more convenient. And uh, just check out the link I'm gonna leave about this product. And just look at the price and what you get, all the features, all the things you get for the money. I've done a lot of power station reviews and this one is going to the top of the list just because of the value you get for the money. All right, thanks for watching. Take care, be well, and smash the bell.